Welcome to another day on Planet Doug. And today is a road trip day. I'm at the very start of a road trip that is going to take me to the historical town of Sukhothai. But today I'm only going as far as Tak City. I like to go very slowly on all my trips. And I'm just outside of Mesod. I stopped once again at the Chao Por Pawo Shrine, which you see behind me. The significance of this shrine for me today is that there is a tradition here of people honking their horns and setting off firecrackers as a tribute to uh, Pawo. And Pawo will give you, will bestow a safe journey on you in return. Here are the firecrackers that I got. You can buy different boxes here. This is the smallest box of 100 firecrackers. Costs uh, 30 baht, about $1 US. And then you can get a box of 500, a box of 1,000, a box of 5,000, even a box of 10,000. And last time I was here, I saw people setting off some quite large boxes and it was pretty impressive. In the large boxes, there would be a string of uh, firecrackers like, oh no. <laughs> I don't know if this is, oh no, this is not boding well for my day. I pulled out the fuse. I tried to hold on to it by the fuse. Dummy that I am, I, I never did that before. I don't know why I did it today. And the fuse came out. Can I reinsert the fuse? I have no idea. I guess I'll try and uh, we'll see what happens. I guess I'm supposed to hold it from the other end. I might have to get um, some more um, firecrackers if this fuse doesn't work. And now, <laughs> I don't know. I'm here hopefully to get um, some safety for my journey and and I've I've kind of messed up before I even got started. Anyway, we're going to give this a try. But with such a short fuse now, I think I have to move uh, quickly. Okay, let's see if this works. It worked, but did you, I don't know if you saw that, it did it differently. It didn't seem to start at the bottom where it was supposed to. It lit some kind of a fuse that went straight up the middle and it seemed to start exploding from the middle. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Planet Doug tip, when you buy your firecrackers, don't dangle the string from the fuse. The fuse will come out, hold it from the other end.
All right, uh, my second pit stop of the day, the uh, Dwa Mooser coffee shop right here. There's the, the new Mooser market behind me. There's actually two coffee shops here. One over there, a little bit more uh, low key with outdoor seating. This one is a little bit more upscale. You can sit uh, indoors and I need to sit indoors because whew, I am telling you that was a cold ride. I think we're uh, coming out of whatever season that was and we're moving into whatever season this is. I mean, the rainy season is supposed to be over, but the clouds, I mean, look at the sky up there. Rain clouds everywhere. So we're not out of the rainy season yet, but it's gotten cooler. And that ride this morning through the mountains there, I hit some sections like lower valley sections Man, I'm Canadian, but uh, <laughs> I was shivering. So a uh, cup of coffee to heat up. So here's the uh, outside of this place. It's quite nice. I've been here uh, one time before. Uh, and uh, there's the inside. And they've got some nice uh, seating over here as well. And then uh, in the window. I don't know if this machine is plugged in, but that's, uh, nope, but I'm so cold. <laughs> and as I noted last time I was here, they, they have their own branded coffee for sale as well. Dwa Musur coffee, different types here. So yeah, it's a very nice place. Okay, I'm inside the coffee shop. My hot latte is being prepared. I was holding my hands over their um, steamer where they're uh, drying and, and sterilizing all the uh, coffee cups, you know, just to warm up my hands. Yeah, that was a cool dry. Nice though, refreshing. No question about that. Oh, so uh, update about today. Today should be quite a simple day. Oh, there it is. My latte has arrived. Cup and crap. Ah. There we are. My latte uh, is here. Oh, it's very nice. They ma they make a good uh, cup of coffee here. Oh, strong uh, coffee flavor. So as I was saying. Um, I'm only going to Tak City today. I'm going to spend one night in Tak. Probably I'm going to go to the uh, Dome Thong Residence Hotel. I stayed there uh, one night already when I was coming back from uh, Gampeng Pet. And uh, yeah, it's a nice hotel, 400 baht a night. Um, but yeah, really, really comfortable. So I'm going to stay there for one night, I think just one night. And then I'll ride to Sukutai tomorrow morning and uh, I don't know where I'm going to stay there yet. I'll, I'll find a place, figure something out. But today I did spot one place I want to visit before I go to Tak City, at least one place. Um, here at the Mooser Market, that's where I am now. Just a few kilometers up the road, maybe three or four, there's a road that goes to the north. I was going to call it the loop to somewhere but it's not really a loop. It's actually just a road that goes in to the, the countryside here, goes to a town. I'll, I'll look up the name of the town here and I'll put the map in the video so you can see what I'm talking about. And the town is called Ban Hua Pla Lot. And there seems to be quite an ornate temple there. And when you click on a satellite view, you can see that this little village is nestled in a very beautiful spot up there in the hills or the mountains, whatever you want to call them. So I just want to uh, hop on this road, 
get to this small town, this uh, village in the mountains there that you can see. Kind of explore that place a little bit, look at the temple. Maybe follow the small road out of the town as far as I can go up into the mountains, see where it goes, and then I'll just turn around and then head back to this main highway, Highway 12, to finish the rest of the ride to Tak. Ah, thank you. Do you know how to pronounce the name of this town, this little village? Ban Hui Palot. Oh, Ban Hui. Oh, it is yours. Yes. Hui? No. Hui. Hui. Yes. Ban. Bla. Bla. Is the fish. Fish. In in English, fish. Bla. Bla means fish. Oh, okay. Bla. Bla Lot is a name of a kind of a fish. Bla Lot. Oh, okay. Oh, a name of a kind of fish. Okay. Hui. I, I have so much trouble okay. with pronunciation. Ban Ban is a village. Village. Uh, ban Hui. Hui. Hui is a Hue. water. Oh, water. Yes. Um, like a stream or river? Uh, like a river, but small. Small river. Okay, okay like a stream. Hui. Bla. Lot. Lot. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm gonna have a difficult time with that, but Ban Hue Hue Pla Lot. So this is the uh, the name of the the village where I'm going, and it's her village actually. That's where she's from. So look at that um, ser serendipity today. There's actually uh, two. There's another village on the way there. I'll probably right over there you can see it there so i'll probably draw ride into that village and kind of ride around a little bit and then go up to the main town take a look at the temple so that's going to be my uh, my small adventure can i ask you about the coffee where does this coffee come from oh it does you grow you grow coffee beans there Oh, you do? Yes. Oh. I plant and I process, but I lost growth. Okay. But all of uh, my family do everything. Uh, uh, plant mm -hmm. to roast to brew. brew. Okay. So you do all of it. Yes, yes. Only your family, or do many families grow coffee? Uh, many family plant, and me too. But my family is a uh, process. Oh, and you process it. Okay. Do you sell this coffee in other places around Thailand, or only here? Ah, do you want to someday? You make you make. Do you want to sell your coffee in Bangkok or sell this oh, in Mesot yes, yes, someday? Yes. Today, uh, now I sell, but uh, we are online. Online. Yes. Oh. By, uh, my page, Facebook. Yes. Ah, I will look for it. Ah. <laughs> I was so uh, pleased when I found out that the woman here who's been serving me the coffee speaks some English. So I asked her about the coffee that they sell here. And to my astonishment, really my astonishment, it turns out that her family grows their own coffee beans. And I was wondering about that every time I've come to this market because I've seen a lot here about coffee and yet I've never seen coffee being grown anywhere. But apparently at this village where we're going to go next, 
they grow coffee beans in, in the hills. And her family not only uh, grows the coffee beans, they process them as well. And she sells them online. So I'm going to, I'm going to look for their uh, Facebook page uh, when I get the chance. And um, yeah, they sell them online. And, and, and then they sell the coffee beans here and then different places around the Duwamus or this area. So yeah, that's uh, added a new element to today because uh, I've had a little bit of experience with this in the past. In past lives of mine, I spent some time in Peru and in Guatemala and in uh, Ecuador. And on those trips, you know, I encountered coffee plantations everywhere and coffee beans. And just learning about the coffee growing process was really quite interesting. For someone from Canada who knew nothing about coffee at all, you know, as a kid and as a teenager, coffee just came in a jar. I didn't even know where coffee came from. So when I went to uh, South America for the first time and saw actual coffee beans and realized that it was a fruit and then you remove the fruit and the seed in the middle is the bean, you know, is the coffee bean and you roast that bean, you know, that whole thing, exactly where coffee beans come from, the fact that they're green, you know, when they come out of the fruit and then they have to roast them in order to make them, you know, brown and black. I didn't know any of that. So it was a, uh, you know, learning about coffee is always kind of fascinating. Based on all that rambling I just did about coffee plants, coffee beans, coffee plantations, it's very apropos that there happens. I didn't even notice it till just now. There is a coffee plant right outside my window. And this coffee plant came from her village. They brought it from there and planted it here at the coffee shop. And there it is there. And uh, you can just make out on the branches some uh, coffee fruit. I don't know exactly what the terminology is, but those are, that's the fruit of the coffee plant. And then the coffee bean itself is inside that fruit. Kind of a, uh, a husk, I guess. And it turns out that uh, this hot tea that I've been drinking is not from a tea plant. This is also from their coffee beans, from their coffee plant. This, is, this tea is made from the fruit. Um, so they remove the husk, you know, the fruit from around the bean, dry it and, and process it in some way. And then they make tea from it and they actually um, sell it here separately. So if you look uh, inside, there's the, um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but those are, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy this so uh, I, can, I can remove some of it. They've taken the, the coffee uh, fruit and roasted it. So it actually looks like coffee beans, but those aren't coffee beans. That's actually the roasted fruit on the outside. I remember when I was in Peru long ago, I was so surprised. You know, might have been in Guatemala, actually. No, this was in Guatemala. And um, visited all these coffee plantations. And you think when you go to the coffee plantation, you're going to get the best coffee ever, right? They must drink amazing coffee there all day long. So I got there, and then I was drinking the coffee that they served there. That It wasn't like in a restaurant or anything. It was just coffee that the, the workers were drinking and they gave me a cup and it just wasn't wasn't what I was expecting it really wasn't coffee at all and it turned out of course that the best coffee beans were all exported they roast them prepare them process them and they export all the good coffee beans and what the workers were drinking was made from this they were making a special drink made not from the coffee bean but from the coffee fruit and that's what I was having at all these coffee plantations. So it was actually very, very similar to what I'm having here, though not nearly as good as this. But So there you have it. And the, um, the Facebook page, she said, is just called Mooser Coffee. So you can uh, look it up and order your own coffee directly from her family. Um, I don't know whether they do international deliveries, but it uh, doesn't hurt to ask. And it's organic. So 
that's where I was sitting, right here in the corner. And this is the uh, coffee plant that was right outside my window. I had no idea it was there. And there are some uh, coffee beans. One red one, a bunch of green ones. Quite hard, you know, right now. And there are some, uh, some red ones there. Yeah, the leaves are very shiny, shiny green leaves. And I popped inside for one last question. She's been so helpful, answered so many questions for me. I love running into someone that speaks English. I just hit them with like a million questions because it's so rare. Um, I basically wanted to know if the people in this village in Ban Hoi Plalot are Musser people. She said, yes, that whole village, it's a Musser village. But she said, if I ride beyond that village, deeper into the mountains, then I get into a Karen district. She had a different name for them, these people. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but then she said the Thai people call them Karen. That's the Thai name for them. So there's a Karen district beyond the Mooser village, but her village is uh, Mooser. Just leaving from the coffee shop, there's my tea. <laughs> I'm not actually a big tea drinker. I would say I'd never drink tea on my own except when they serve it to me in restaurants. But this is such a special occasion. I had to, uh, I had to buy some of their special coffee tea. Yeah, I don't even know what to call it. It's not really tea, but it's not coffee. I guess it's um, coffee, coffee tea. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go, I'm going to ride up to the village next. It's about, it's not that far away, seven kilometers uh, from here. And I was hoping for the sun to break out, but I don't know what is going on. Just overcast and threatening to rain all the time. Luckily, I, I only have plans to go as far as Attack City because sure it looks like it's going to rain on me. So, this might be the road I'm looking for to go to Ban Hoi Plalot. So, it is now time to keep our eyes open looking for coffee beans, coffee plantations. Oh, and we've got a, a checkpoint here. Swadi mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. Yeah, at the checkpoint, the uh, soldiers didn't seem concerned about me going this way. There was a man in, the pick in a pickup truck there who seemed a little bit concerned about who I was and where I was going. He uh, looked like he wanted to ask me some questions, but he couldn't come up with the right words in English, so he eventually let it go and just <sighs> said goodbye. The road is the star attraction so far. You really can't get a better road than this if you're looking for small adventures on a scooter. But it is interesting that there is a military checkpoint right at the exit of this road. I wonder what the thinking is there. Must feel a bit weird if you are one of the Mooser people living in this village. And then every, every day when you drive out of your village, you have to go through a military checkpoint. getting close to the village now and I should be seeing 
a road on the right leading to the temple at some point. Whoa, okay. I remember this from when I was looking at pictures of the temple online. That's why I called it quite an ornate temple because I saw quite a few whoa, images like this one uh, off to the right. Look at that. That is a very dramatic image. Yeah, this is definitely a, a place I'm going to stop on my way out of the village. So there's the, the stairway leading up to the temple. And there's quite a collection of statues here. Dogs. A lot of dogs. So there's something about this temple to do with dogs. Some very fierce looking guardians. Even a kind of a golem looking character over there on the right with a cigar and a bone skull between his feet. So these guardians are very bird-like. They have wings, bird heads, and uh, claws. There's the entrance to the temple right behind me. Very dramatic uh, entrance. So I'm looking forward to uh, checking that out on my way out of the village. So I've reached the uh, edge of the village. There's a section here where the, the road has eroded and is uh, washing away. So can't get much closer than this. And there's the village Ban Huai Pla Lot down below, named after a fish that lives in a stream. And the road is going to curve down into the village and then it comes out the other side there and continues on into the, uh, the hills. And I passed another entrance to the temple. There, it was a, ah, here's another uh, kind of an open view of the village. I don't know that I'll be able to have much in the way of an experience in there other than riding through the streets a little bit and taking a look around. but I was hoping to see something to do with coffee. A coffee plantation, coffee farm, coffee processing center, coffee shop. <laughs> that would be nice. But we will see. I'm, I'm interested actually in how large a coffee plantation you need in order to sell your own coffee. This family grows its own coffee, processes it to the point where they opened up their own coffee shop and sell their coffee online. But to do all that, how big an operation do you need? The word coffee is always associated with a plantation. And of course, when one thinks of a plantation, you think of a very large place but maybe even a smaller operation can produce a lot of coffee. I honestly don't know. Here we are in Ban Hua Pla Lot. I think I have a pretty good idea of how to say Pla Lot, but the first word I still don't know how to say. Well, Ban, of course, but Hoi, Hui, Ban Hui Pla Lot. I'm going to stick with that for now. Angle grinder, of course. <laughs> An angle grinder greets me in every village I enter.
I wonder if there is a tourism aspect to this town in the uh, pre-pandemic times. Mm -hmm. and here's the uh, local school. The Ban Hue Plalot, Plalod, Plalod School. Oh, look at this. So maybe this is the uh, the road that heads deeper into the countryside. A bunch of villages in there as far as 14 kilometers away. But man, just looking at that road, that is, the first part is steep. That, that road is, uh, yeah, look at that, that is no joke. <laughs> I might go up there just a little bit but uh, maybe not, we'll see. Swadi crab. Well, I think the road is going to dead end up here. This is going to be the end of the village. Swadi crab. I don't see anything to do with coffee. Not yet, anyway. Swadi crab. And I think this might be my uh, dead end up here. Sorry, crap. Right here. And this could be the, look at that, that's kind of nice. There's the uh, small stream that the village is named after. Beautiful little spot. You definitely have the feeling of being somewhere very different and very special when you're here. Mm. Yeah. And it's certainly not the place where someone like me on a scooter like this can be anonymous. I might as well be a marching band going through this village. but I'm still looking for coffee, any hint of coffee. If it's here, it's well hidden. I thought I'd at least see coffee beans out to dry on a tarp, something like that, but maybe all that takes place in the hills right at the uh, plantations themselves.
Well, it's a bit tricky, but it looks like, according to Google Maps, this road here leads further into the hills. And this is where you would go to go to the interior, but I don't see... Uh, Okay, maybe straight ahead here. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to go far if this is the road in question. This is the very beginning of it. <laughs> yeah, and this is a uh, more adventure than I signed up for for today, that's for sure. But I really would like to just see a coffee bush. According to the maps and everything, this road goes on for maybe 14 kilometers. But could it possibly go on like this for 14 kilometers? These uh, kind of paving stones. But as I've said, I'm definitely not going very far. Just want to go around this corner, basically. See what's here. And then I will... Uh, And then I will uh, turn around. Yeah, I'm not going up that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that up ahead. I, maybe it doesn't come across on the GoPro, but that is steep. And um, I think you really want to know where you're going if you head in that direction. And you want to have friends in the neighborhood to get you out when you get stuck. Turning around. Yeah. Even turning around is a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. There we go. But this may not be the main road at all. I just didn't see any other main road leading from this point. But Google Maps tells me there's supposed to be one. Maybe it's the other direction, back at where this little trail started. So, before I leave here, I do want to uh, visit the temple. So let's do that. It'd certainly be interesting to meet someone here that you could speak to and find out about this place. Get kind of a guided tour, but it's not going to happen today. Very interesting place, very interesting. In an interesting twist, perhaps, that village and the people, the way they dress, the way they look, everything feels much more typically what I would think of as Mooser, as Hill Tribe, than the Hill Tribe market itself, which felt quite like an ordinary Thai market to me.
but this village down on the streets there felt very much like a special place. I enjoyed that a lot, even though I didn't spend a lot of time there, just riding up and down. Yeah, I enjoyed that quite a bit. And the main entrance to the temple should be right up here. Yeah, right on, right on my, oh. This guy's a pretty startling, a, uh, yeah, basically a, a centaur. He's got his arrow aimed right at the road as you come around the corner. Four or five rings on his fingers. Long hair, bearded. Interesting figure. And this is the main entrance to the temple. And another one of the uh, bird-like guardians towering above us. Wow. And behind him, another very dramatic figure. She's part bird as well, has a lot of toucans, birds like that, on her hands and in her hair. Quite dramatic. With the rain clouds threatening, this road is quite interesting like a rainforest tunnel. Very dark in here right now. I assumed it was leading to a temple. Oh, wow. I think this is uh, where we are right now. The wow was a reaction to these uh, statues here. One on the left and uh, this one uh, on the right. Another one over here. Whoa. I am gonna get off the scooter, so take a walk around, but look at the uh, display over here. Wow, that is something else. Okay, let's uh, park and uh, take a walk around. A lot of dogs here at the temple. Some not so friendly. One very friendly one. My buddy down here has the, uh, the cone of shame. And uh, she's quite friendly, but uh, her companions are not so much. But yeah, look at the elaborate statues here. Three-headed beast. No, more. There's several on well, top. Well, I was just counting the heads on this, what I believe is called a naga, when my GoPro battery died. So I'm now on the pocket two. And I finished counting and I came to the number nine. And there could easily be more than nine heads in there. But uh, whatever the actual number, there's a lot of them. Yeah, very elaborate display. And an equally elaborate one on the other side here with a soldier. And uh, more soldiers at the front. And uh, what is clearly 
a war elephant. And three more uh, up above. There was a, a couple here when I first arrived. Uh, they drove up here in a car and uh, a Thai couple. And I asked them if there was any kind of significance behind these uh, elaborate displays. I thought there must be a story, some history to go along with it. And they, as far as they were aware, um, they said, no, not really, that um, the original headmaster or the old headmaster of this temple, he just happened to be very artistic. And it was his influence that led to these very elaborate statues. And I also asked him about the dogs. I thought there must be some, signif some significance to the large number of dog statues here. And he said, no, it was just because the, the headmaster, he also really liked dogs. So yeah, it's not something I ever really thought about. Every time I see something special about a temple, something elaborate, I just assume there is a legend, a story, some historical significance, cultural significance, religious significance, something very deep and meaningful about it. But it could also be just as simple as the, the monks who live here just um, happen to like it this way. They like dogs, so they put up a lot of dog statues. They're very artistic, so this temple has more of an artistic flair than other ones uh, that you might see. And I also asked about the different statues, like here there is the, the Naga, and then down at the entranceway are those bird guardians, which I believe are called a Garuda, something like that. And he said that uh, they both serve us the similar function, their role in the temple in terms of protecting it and keeping out uh, evil spirits. But even though they do the same job, they don't get along. So the Naga and the Garuda are kept separate, some down at the entrance and then some up here at the top. So that's uh, what I've learned so far today. And these are the stairs that I saw when I first uh, rode up this road. I just want to uh, go down here for a second and take a look at these uh, statues. Ah. And this is where I saw all of the, uh, yeah, the dogs. And again, I thought they would have some kind of a religious significance and they may well have, but according to my, uh, my guide, he said, no, it's just that the headmaster uh, just happens to really like dogs. And there's a, uh, quite a large Garuda guardian up there. And a couple more dogs over here, a Dalmatian and a German Shepherd. And then one more temple guardian. Yeah, it's quite an interesting place. I'm trying to move slowly so as not to rile up the dogs. Swadikra, how are you? Look at this uh, archway into an interior part of the temple. The bodies of the uh, snakes forming an arch. And more of these uh, archers. Wow, actually this one, I didn't even realize it. This archer is on the, the body of the snake. And uh, this guy over here, double axes. And uh, yeah, he's on the uh, another uh, snake body. Whoa, look at this. And then you've got these uh, guardians holding up the, uh, the heavy bodies of these snakes. And there's a very uh, dramatic fellow too. He's got a couple of swords. And there's some of the dogs. Oh, huskies, look at that. Oh, there's uh, quite a number of dogs. <laughs> you have to be comfortable with big dogs if you're going to be visiting this temple. Look at this guy down here. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> this black one, he's a... Uh, 
<laughs> growling at me. He's not too pleased. But these other ones seem uh, relatively friendly. Hello. Are you going to come with me? Hmm? Oh. oh, look at that. He's a yes, good dog. He doesn't mind being pet. Hi. He's uh, getting quite close. Yes, 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 yes. Hello. All right, well, I think it's time for me to go. What do you think? Hmm? I got to hit the road. Yes, I do. Got to get out of here. Cover some kilometers. I'm on my way to Tax City. Oh. So that worked out well. I eventually won. I won over one of the dogs anyway. There's a bunch more over there. They don't know me yet. <laughs> yeah, it's time to get out of here. And, uh, more and more of the artistic flair of the head monk is apparent. Even have a, a fish pond here. It's quite elaborate, very jungly. Good for the dogs. He's got uh, all the water he could drink. Quite the interesting place. A young monk was just passing by, so I asked him a little bit about what was going on here, and I couldn't really make out all the names he was mentioning, but it kind of makes sense. He was saying that these three large statues here, the three figures, were famous kings of Thailand, and he made three names. Then I noticed when I moved around to the front, one of them is a queen, it was a woman, so it could be a queen. And he told me about the, you know, the relationship between these, uh, between these three. But um, I couldn't quite keep track of it, but it just makes sense that they're famous historical figures from the history of Thailand. So I think that is all for my visit to this temple. Time to, uh, time to move on. I'm just a couple of kilometers outside of Tax City, so I, I could just sort of keep going and, and get there and get to my hotel, but for some reason I'm in the mood for another pit stop. I want to sort of relax and get my bearings before I uh, enter the city. And <laughs> the place that uh, was on the highway is right here. This is a uh, PT gas station. I don't know how PT is different from PTT, I've gotten used to PTT and they always have the Amazon Cafe and a 7-Eleven as part of the gas station complex. I have a feeling PT has to be related, but it's got a whole different vibe, different color scheme. It's green and there's some kind of a convenience store. It's not 7-Eleven though, it's a Max Mart and their coffee shop is the Pun Thai coffee right there behind me and they have some seating inside so I'm going to go um, grab a coffee and sort of relax a little bit before I head into the city and here is a Pun Thai coffee and I don't think I'm going to go crazy with my order I'm just going to get a simple coffee to sit down All done my coffee. I was going to give a little bit of a trip update while I was enjoying my uh, latte in there, but they had music playing, so I, I couldn't run the camera. So I'm back outside. I suppose there isn't a whole lot to say in terms of an update because you would have seen it in the video. I went to see that uh, village about 15 kilometers off the, uh, the main road, the, uh, the Mooser village there. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting to ride through that village and uh, quite interesting to visit that temple as well. 
Okay, it's such an odd combination of all that ornate decoration at the temple combined with the largest number of huge dogs I've seen in a long time. There's a lot of dogs there and they were all big ones. So you really had to be okay with being surrounded by big dogs in order to visit that uh, temple as a foreigner. But as long as you stood your ground and just stayed calm, they, would, they rushed at me really loud and barking. But then as soon, if I didn't react in any way, they just calmed down instantly. And then just gathered around my legs and the, uh, the friendliest of them would start butting their heads into my legs because they all wanted to be scratched and pet, you know. But the weird thing is they would uh, become very comfortable with me. But then if I walked away for a few minutes to take some pictures or look somewhere else, as soon as I came back, it was like I was a brand new stranger all over again. One dog would start growling and then suddenly the whole pack would come rushing at me again. And I'd have to stand still and sort of let them calm down, <laughs> gather around me again. I was, I was the dog whisperer. And while I was out there, I got a notification. I got a message on WhatsApp. But I was so far away from the internet at that point that I, I couldn't really read the message. I knew I got a message, but I didn't really know what it was about. But then when I rejoined the highway, I had a better uh, connection, I guess. And uh, I got some amazing news that a, a mystery benefactor saw my post this morning that I'm on my way to Sukhothai and I'll be arriving in Sukhothai tomorrow. And uh, this mystery benefactor booked a hotel for me in Sukhothai right at the entrance of the historical park. So I'll be staying at the Orchid, the Orchid Hibiscus Guest House. Looks like a very nice place, very nice. So uh, thank you very much to uh, my mystery a benefactor uh, once more. This uh, hotel even has a swimming pool. Whether I will take advantage of the swimming pool or not, uh, only time will tell, we'll see. I do enjoy swimming. I love swimming, though I'm more of an ocean lake swimmer, more so than a pool swimmer. But um, if there's a nice pool there and uh, it's open and um, yeah, a good opportunity presents itself to dive in and paddle about a little bit, I'll, I'll definitely do that. One thing I just found out, I was chatting with my mystery benefactor just now and he was telling me that in this historical park at Sukhothai, you can't take your scooter into the park. In Gambang Pet, I was able to take my scooter everywhere, even from temple to temple, inside the big forest district, which was kind of essential because you had to cover a lot of ground. It was a big park. But I guess uh, Sukhothai, you can't do that. You, you have to go on foot or rent a bicycle and maybe the hotel provides bicycles. So that, 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 that ought to be pretty nice. That'll be really interesting. But the orchid hibiscus is right at the entrance to the park. So that opens up the possibility of just leaving the uh, hotel, strolling into the park and, and walking around comfortably. So that'll be nice. I haven't had a whole lot of walking exercise since I became a, a scooter guy. And I think I need a little bit of exercise anyway. So that will be good. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm uh, heading into Tak City right now. I'm just on the edges of the city. I'm going to go to the uh, Dome Thong Hotel, check in there for a night, settle in. Anyway, uh, time to get back on the road. One funny thing is while I was sitting inside the coffee shop, I've got my scooter parked right outside. As often happens on this highway, three people showed up on big, expensive looking motorcycles I didn't see the brand this time. I, I didn't get a close look at them, but they were set up for long distance touring. They had the, the, the solid um, pannier cases on, on both sides, you know, the big metal boxes to carry your luggage. They were, they were decked out with all the latest gear, all the latest technology, really beautiful motorcycles. It's always funny to see them uh, right beside my uh, humble scooter though. As I've mentioned uh, in a couple of places in a few different times, I actually prefer the scooter. I'd much rather ride a scooter than a big motorcycle any, any day of the week. Just suits my personality. But I just noticed that as I was uh, uh, just getting ready to uh, leave the uh, coffee shop, 
someone showed up on a, a Triumph, a Triumph Bonneville T100 motorcycle. Beautiful looking bike, and it's right beside my scooter. I'll give you a look at it. There it is there. I'm not sure what size engine a Triumph like this has, but yeah, it's a beautiful bike. Classic, yeah, classic lines. I'm assuming it's a real Triumph. I'm not a motorcycle guy, so I don't really know anything about them. But I, I just know Triumph is a famous name in the motorcycle world, isn't it? Uh, there it is uh, beside my, uh, my humble scooter. All right, time to get on my humble scooter and head into the city. So let's uh, check out the room. Yeah, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly the same, almost exactly the same as my last room that I had here, except there was a big wardrobe in the corner there. I guess the wardrobe in this room wore out and they had to get rid of it or something like that. Oh, oh no, they just moved it. I spotted the wardrobe. They have it over here in the... Uh, in the corner now. So you got a wardrobe, refrigerator, and a TV, of course, on the wall. A little bit of furniture, table and a chair, and the bed. Air conditioner, of course, very important. And the, the bathroom. And there you have it. So, time to uh, unpack uh, from my scooter and uh, settle into my room. And I think that's it for today. And next time I check in, I guess it will be the road to uh, Sukhothai. Or maybe I'll have a chat over breakfast. We'll see, what, uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. So, thanks for coming along once more on this little journey. And I'll see you in the next video.